Hello friends, welcome to a new topic today. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the muscles of the face. So in the muscles of the face, we have what is face first? Face is superiorly, it is bounded by the hairline. Superiorly, there is hairline. Okay, and if you see laterally, there is upper up to auricle. Laterally, we have it is, it is present up to auricle. Then inferiorly, it extends up to the chin or base of the mandible. Super superiorly, it is up to the hairline. Laterally, it is up to an auricle. And inferiorly, it is up to the base of the mandible. And if you see forehead is the common part to both face and scalp. So we will see skin of face. Skin of face, if you see, it is very thick, elastic and very vascular. It is thick, elastic and very vascular. It also contains a number of sweat and salivary sebaceous glands. It contains many sweat and sebaceous glands and this sweat glands help to regulate the body temperature. These sweat glands also keep the face oily. Okay, next. So, this picture here, it shows the cleavage lines of the face. And these cleavage lines are the natural, these, this face picture shows the cleavage lines of the face. And these cleavage lines will actually, most of the of times, it will, uh, you know, coincide with the natural wrinkles lining the face. And if you see, whenever there is repeated folding of, why is there natural wrinkles? Natural wrinkles mainly occurs due to the repeated flowing of skin, sorry, folding of skin perpendicular to the long axis of the underlying contracted muscle. Because of the repeated folding, that repeated folding will lead to the formation of natural wrinkles of the face. Then, what? where is this natural wrinkles of face? It is mostly prominent in the elderly because of the loss of elasticity, skin elasticity. Once there is loss of skin elasticity, these, nation, uh, these uh, uh, natural wrinkles are seen in the old age people. Okay? So, this is na lateral view for the cleavage lines of the face. Then, if there is any wounds, you should give the incisions along this cleavage line so that healing is done without any uh, significant scar formation and along the natural wrinkle line. Then, then if you see, we will learn a few points about superficial fascia. What does this superficial fascia contain? This superficial fascia contains the muscles of facial expression. It contains the muscles of facial nerve, facial expression and it contains the nerves and also variable fat. Okay, superficial fascia contains the muscles of the facial expression and uh, nerves and also facial uh, variable amount of fat. See, fat is absent only in the eyelids and it is well developed in the uh, cheeks. When, uh, because it is well developed in the cheeks, we have this buccal pad of, pad of fat. Especially it is well developed in uh, cheeks and it is very prominent in infants. And this buccal pad of, pad of fat is also called a sectoral pad of fat. Why is it called a sectoral pad of fat? Because it is helpful in suckling the milk. For suckling of milk, this buccal pad of fat is very useful in infants. Then if we see, we have one more thing which is called as deep fascia, that is superficial fascia. So what do you see in the superficial fascia? <coughs> in the superficial fascia, you see muscles of facial expression are present, nerves and veins are present, there will be fat, especially fat is present in the cheek or buccal pad of fat, which is also called as buccal pad of fat or sectoral pad of fat and this fat is absent in the eyelids okay then in the deep fascia deep fascia is actually absent in the face except it is present only in two layers that is it is present only in the over the parotid gland and the masseter muscle why is it absent in the face it's simple because we have to have proper facial expression so for this facial expression uh, if we have deep fascia the face might become very stiff so it is difficult for uh, all the uh, you know uh, um, natural elasticity of the face so as a result it is uh, uh, this deep fascia is absent in the face and this uh, uh, parotid gland and the masseter muscle these both are covered by parotido masseteric fascia which is a deep fascia so in the face you will have deep fascia only in two regions one in the parotid gland region and the other in the masseter muscle then what are the muscles of the facial expression so before we go into the muscles of the facial expression we will learn few characteristics of uh, muscles of the facial expression what are the characteristic features of muscles of facial expression one thing they are the muscles which lie in the superficial fascia okay if you see most of the muscles will be deeper inside the uh, body but these are in these lie in the superficial fascia and these are inserted in the skin so morphologically 
दे आर दे रिप्रेजेंट स्पेशलाइज मेम्बर्स ऑफ सबक्यूटेनियस मसल्स दैट इज कॉल्ड हैज पैनिक्यूलस कारनोसिस दिस इज द सबक्यूटेनियस मसल्स इन द लोअर एनिमल्स सो दीज रिप्रेजेंट दीज मसल्स दीज मसल्स विल रिप्रेजेंट द सबक्यूटेनियस मसल्स ऑफ द लोअर एनिमल्स सो इफ यू सी दीज मसल्स आर डिराइव्ड मेनली फ्रॉम द मीसोडर्म ऑफ सेकेंड पैरेंशियल आर्च मसल्स सो दीज आर डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम मीसोडर्म ऑफ सेकेंड पैरेंशियल आर्च मसल्स एंड दीज आर सप्लाइड बाई फेशियल नर्व सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी वॉट आर द मसल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट अराउंड द ऑरिफिस फर्स्ट मसल्स अराउंड द ऑरिफिस आर कॉल्ड हैज ऑरबिक्यूलरिस और ऑरिस सो दिस इज द मसल विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द अराउंड द ऑरिफिस ऑर्बिटल ऑक्यूराई ओके फर्स्ट ऑर्बिक्यूलर दिस इज प्रेजेंट अराउंड द आई सो दिस ऑर्बिक्यूलरिस ऑरिस हैज मेनली टू पार्ट्स ओके वन इट हैज ऑर्बिक्यूलरिस पार्ट सॉरी ऑर्बिटल पार्ट एंड सेकेंड वी हैव पैलपिब्रल पार्ट so this is the orbital part this round this is surrounding the eye that is orbital part palpebral part is present on the eyelid that is palpebral part so if you see this or <coughs> this orbital part it, it or this orbital part mainly uh, this is the orbital part it originates from the medial palpebral ligament so these are the originating features it originates from the medial palpebral ligament okay here you will have medial palpebral ligament it originates from it it also originates from the frontal process of maxilla it originates from the medial palpebral ligament and frontal process of maxilla and these fibers will form a complete loop around the eye okay and they actually return to the point of origin and what is the use it is used mainly for the closes eye tightly to protect eye from the intense light whenever you have intense light in order to protect the eye from intense light this uh, with the help of this muscle it closes the eye tightly okay so this is the orbital part of orbicularis oculi then if you see the palpebral part even this palpebral part also originates from the medial palpebral ligament the origin of palpebral part is also from the medial palpebral ligament okay and this palpebral part will sweep over the uh, eyelid and it gets inserted see it starts from the medial palpebral ligament like this it is something like this it starts from the medial palpebral ligament and it sweeps over the eyelid and it originates and it inserts into the lateral palpebral ligament okay so it originates from the medial palpebral ligament and then it inserts into the lateral palpebral ligament okay what does this help in this helps in closing the eyelids as in deep sleep okay for deep sleep or in blinking we use this uh, uh, palpebral part of orbicularis oculi so we have in the palpebral part it is mainly helpful for the um, closing of eyes uh, whenever we have to sleep or blinking whereas orbital part is helpful for closing the eyes forcefully either to decrease the vision or for any reason then we have one more part which is called has lacrimal part what is the origin of this lacrimal part this lacrimal part actually it originates from the posterior lacrimal sac this lacrimal part originates from the posterior lacrimal sac and passes laterally in front of the tarsal plates and gets inserted into the lateral palpebral raphe i could not show this in this picture but it actually originates from the lacrimal sac which is somewhere present here and it gets inserted into the lateral palpebral fissure it's something like this okay then the next group of muscles of facial expression are corrugator superciliary supercilia what are the corrugator supercilia this corrugator supercilia where does it get it originate this corrugator supercilia it originates from the medial arch of supraciliary notch medial end of supraciliary superciliary notch this is the superciliary notch it originates from the medial end of the superciliary notch it passes laterally see it originates from the medial end of superciliary notch it passes laterally and upwards and inserts in the eyebrow above the middle of supraorbital margin it originates in the eyebrow above the middle of supraorbital margin so what is its uh, origin it originates from the medial end of superciliary notch and then it inserts into the skin of eyebrow above the middle of the supraorbital margin so this is about the uh, muscle uh, corrugator supercilia corrugator supercilia okay then what is the action of it it drags the eyebrows medially and downwards as in frowning so it helps in frowning mainly it it helps the eyeball to draw medially and downwards eyebrow to draw medially and downwards and as a result it helps in frowning then then if you see we have levator sup palpebrae superioris and also frontalis muscles which are the muscles which are responsible for 
uh, I expression. We have done levator palpebral superioris in the I region, whereas frontalis is already done in uh, the scalp region. Okay, then what are the muscles which are is around seen around the nasal cavity? The muscles around the nasal cavity include the following muscles. This is the muscle which is called as procerus. So, what is this procerus? This procerus originates from the nasal bone and it gets inserted into the lower part of forehead. It originates from the nasal bone and gets inserted into the lower part of the uh, skin of the lower part of forehead. So, this is the procerus and what is this use it produces transverse wrinkling at wrinkles across the bridge of the nose as in frowning it produces transverse wrinkles along the bridge of the nose as in frowning then we have something called as nasalis so in the nasalis we have two types of nasal nares which are we have compressor nares and dilator nares the nasalis has two parts which is compressor nares one is dilator nares and the second one is compressor nares so if you see the origin of both of them are almost similar if you see this compressor nares it originates from the maxilla close to the nasal notch it originates from the maxilla close to the nasal notch forms the aponeurosis across the bridge of the nose and it continues with the counter part on the opposite side so it continues with the counter part that means if this is the nose okay so this muscle starts somewhere from here it uh, originates from the maxilla close to the nasal notch and it uh, forms an aponeurosis over the bridge of the nose and continues with the opposite side it's something like this okay what is the action of it it has the name says it is compressor so it compresses the uh, nasal aperture okay then we have one more which is called as dilator nares right what does this dilator nares do it also uh, originates from the margin of uh, uh, maxilla uh, which is uh, near the nasal notch it also originates from maxilla near the na 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 nasal notch and it inserts into the lateral part of ala of nose it inserts into the ala of nose itself like this okay so that is di dilator nares what does this dilator nares do this dilates the anterior nasal aperture so dilator nares will dilate the anterior nasal aperture whereas compressor nares will compress the anterior nasal aperture 